Hello everybody, this is Shady here, and recently I did a video doing my unboxing of Persona 3 Re uh, Portable, sorry, not Reload, that's the new game, and um, that video seems to have popped off. I've got like over a thousand views on it, so I thought, you know what, as kind of a little celebration or whatever, I thought, I'll show you my Shin Megami Tensei collection. Um, I don't have every game in the series, um, but I've got a few of them and a couple of interesting things, so hopefully you guys like it. And obviously, to start off, um, this is going to be a strange place to start, but we're going to have to talk about the PlayStation Classic. And the reason why we're talking about this is because it had something really interesting on it. One of the, I think, 20 games, whatever, um, happened to be Persona Revelations, or Revelations Persona, sorry. That was obviously, as everyone knows, that's the PS1 version of the original game. Um, well, it is just the original game that was on PS1. Um, but yeah, the um, it's really interesting because... Um, this version obviously commands quite a high price if you want to buy it. We never got it over here in the PAL regions as well. It only came to North America. And this translated version obviously um, had a lot of changes and quirks. Like one of the characters, they decided to just turn, turn black. Um, they removed like the Snow Queen uh, whole quest. Um, and I think overall it was a little simpler and easier. Um, not too, not so much so, but you know, it, it, it was different enough. Um, so yeah, basically I picked this up just to be my copy of Persona 1, essentially. <laughs> yeah, and you can play it on HDTV and everything. Um, I did also sideload this with Retro Arch, and I did install um, Persona, 2, uh, Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, which is part 2 of Persona 2, because uh, Persona 2 has two games in it, and yeah, it has a very odd release as well. So um, yeah, in North America, they only released part 2, so... Whoever the hell played that back in the day had no idea what was probably going on because it's like there's a whole game before it which sets everything up. Um, and then they remade both games for the PSP and only decided to give us part one on the PSP and not part two. Makes no sense, does it? Um, yeah, so if you want the full Persona 2 experience, you have to pick up the um, PSP version of part one and the PS1 version of part two, or just emulate them, whatever you want. It's up to you, really. Um, you know, I don't care either way. Uh, next up, let's look at the PS2, which in my opinion was, well, it just was probably the golden era for Atlas. Um, yeah, I mean, recently they're doing some good work as well. So, uh, but ne yeah, obviously, as you know, we all started, I think, all of us uh, kind of newer SMT fans started off with this game, Persona 3 uh, Fez. So obviously this isn't the original release of Persona 3. This was the updated version. So obviously the, the original version, um, which was obviously released a couple of years late, uh, earlier. And then this one basically added this whole epilogue um, where you play as one of the characters there. Um, don't want to name names. Probably shouldn't ruin too much. Uh, there is obviously the remake that's come out recently, which I've been playing and am obsessed with. Um, but yeah, this, this is awesome. Um, obviously the answer, which is the epilogue, wasn't included in the remake, um, but apparently um, they are going to be adding it. They, they data mined it and um, have seen clues that it's going to be like a DLC for the new one. So you may not necessarily need to fork out for this one. Um, yeah, obviously it goes without saying basically all these Atlas games are ridiculously expensive. Everyone knows that they do limited runs of all their games um, and typically don't port them. Um, things seem to be changing though, because apparently... Apparently, don't know if it's true, but there's rumors going around that those um, early Persona games are going to get um, re-releases, and obviously, um, yeah, apparently, uh, you know, they're going to they're looking to do more remakes than like because Persona Three did like Persona Three Reload, obviously the remake um, has sold over a million units already in like less than a week, which is awesome for Atlas, by the way, because obviously their games are still quite niche. Um, but yeah, really amazing game. Obviously, this introduced the whole social links and. Um, you know, the whole school activity, visual novel sort of elements to it. Great game. Um, and obviously after that, then came Persona 4. Um, this ended up being quite a late-ish release on the uh, PS2, so yeah. Um, but obviously I managed to pick it up. Um, when was I actually out? Does it say on the back there? Uh, yeah, 2009. So yeah, the PS3 um, was out at that point. Uh, but yeah, I pretty much got this brand new from what I remember. Um, I think it cost about 30 or something. Um, and yeah, what's awesome about this one is it actually does come with this little soundtrack CD. So if you are looking to buy this version, make sure that it comes with that soundtrack CD because it was included. That, it's not the complete thing without that. If you even care, I don't know. You could just listen to it on like 
you know, Spotify, Apple Music or whatever, can't you? Or just YouTube it, I guess. But yeah, um, amazing game. Um, just cool art direction. Um, yeah, this is the one that kind of introduced the um, kind of animal mascot type character that has kind of become a staple uh, with the Persona series. And um, yeah, it's just a great game. Um, yeah, this one is awesome because, uh, yeah, I think it's just like, you know, this feels like a bit more of a refined version of Persona 3. Um, and also just, yeah, I just really like the cast in this game personally. I mean, I love threes as well, but yeah, this one's just awesome. Um, yeah, and obviously next up after that, um, obviously those were the first two I actually played in the Shimagam Tensei series, by the way. I didn't, don't know if I mentioned that, obviously I started off with three and then four. Then after that, I decided to pick up this guy, um, Shimagame Tensei 3 Nocturne Lucifer's Call, featuring Dante from Dove No Cry. And that is the full title, by the way. That's how you have to say it. But yeah, um, yeah, I got quite a rude awakening when I picked this one up because I'm sure everyone knows this, but mainline SMT is a different world to a persona. So yeah, no social links, no school life, just collecting demons and like ridiculously punishing difficulty. But um, yeah, yeah, obviously um, it was kind of, uh, I kind of dropped it when I played it back in the day um, and then did come back and play it and had a great time. Um, but yeah, it, it's just awesome. Trust me, um, don't, there is more ways to play this game. You don't necessarily need this version. Um, yeah, we'll get to that one in a second. Uh, but next up, there was another really cool um, series that was short-lived, the Digital Devil Saga. Yeah, this was kind of, um, I've heard this described in an interesting way. It's it's kind of, it was meant, it almost felt like Atlas's take on something like Final Fantasy, trying to make SMT a little bit more accessible, um, you know, you have your kind of cast of characters there. Um, you know, it felt a bit more of a traditional sort of thing. Still difficult, um, but it just had more of a, you know, a little bit more of a teen-centric thing like Persona, but also felt like a male on SMT. Um, and what's really cool in this one is, um, obviously in Persona, they summon the demons behind them. Um, in SMT, you just fight alongside them. In this one, you actually turn into the demons, which is awesome. Uh, but yeah, it's a great game. This one is still stuck on PS2. Um, those other ones, are, thankfully, aren't. But yeah, um, hopefully we're going to get some sort of a remaster of this game. But yeah, um, that was actually the only one, because it was called Saga. And there was actually a second game as well, Digital Devil Saga 2. And what's really awesome about this game, um, when I bought it, I got the soundtrack. Like... Basically, the full soundtrack. Yeah, the original soundtrack on a in a DVD case, which is so weird. Yeah, there it is there. See? It's just awesome. Um, yeah, I still haven't got around to actually playing the second game. I just picked it up um, alongside the first one back in the day because I was just obsessed with getting RPGs back then. And um, I wanted to get all these S&T games. I'm glad I did because I think these games are a bit more expensive as well. I mean, that goes without saying. Um, yeah, I need to get around to these games again, really. Um, they were just awesome. Um, and then next up, uh, we have to talk about um, a game. Whoa, things are dropping out. <laughs> Doing well, aren't I? But yeah, we need to talk about the DS. And um, in particular, we need to talk about a very special game. Shin Megami Tensei, Strange Journey. Yeah, this is a really interesting game. So this is very weird. So this is basically... Essentially, Shin Megami Tensei 4, but it wasn't called 4. And, uh, yeah, very interesting. So, I lo I really love this game, by the way. Um, just the whole setup is one of my favourites in gaming. So, there's this kind of anomaly that's appeared in um, the Arctic. And then, this is our character here. And we're in this expedition um, to find out what it's called. The Swaltz, whatever it's called, I can't remember. Um, yeah, we're going inside this. It's almost like this giant, like, black orb kind of thing around the Arctic. And we're actually entering it and we're trying to recon and figure out what the hell is going on. And when we enter there, we see that there's demons. And, um, yeah, and we just kind of go deeper and deeper trying to investigate. Um, it almost feels like the game version of something like the movie Stalker or something. Or, um, I guess there was that uh, Natalie Portman movie, wasn't there? What was that called? Like um, Annihilation or something similar to that kind of a premise. Uh, but yeah, it's just a great game. Obviously my cover's a bit messed up. And again, this one comes with their little soundtrack CD as well. Um, it is just like 
a little selection sort of thing if it's not like a full soundtrack but yeah um again also this is a weird one because this was only released in north america again annoyingly so this was imported um but thankfully the original ds is uh, region free so that wasn't an issue uh but they did also do um updated version of this or unupdated version uh, for the 3ds but that um also i don't think we got that over here from what i remember we didn't get that over here um physically and um yeah the 3ds wasn't region free um yeah annoyingly um this game um shimigon may tensei 4 and its sequel apocalypse we never got physical versions of but i do have digital versions of them on my 3ds um, i could just show you my 3ds but you could just imagine them and um, also have the original soul hackers digitally as well because i stupidly i bought it back in the day on 3ds when it first came out and i sold it and it's now ridiculously expensive um but it was like before the 3ds closed down that it was like eight quid digitally so i picked it up all great games by the way um and yeah anyway let's move on um yeah there was another um game released i don't know if anyone's heard of this one though this is a uh, bit of a small game i'm talking about persona 5 here yeah and this is um like the only kind of collector's edition of any of these games i got so obviously at this point i was quite big into the the whole shimagam tensei series so i decided to actually pick up the as you can see the take your heart collector's edition and this one's really awesome it comes with a lot of really cool goodies um, I don't really want to unpack the whole thing, but yeah, you get the steelbook of the game, um, which is awesome. You get this like little sort of poster. Um, is that a poster? Sorry, you get the collector's box. You get a Morgana plush, you get a CD. You get this cool bag, the one that they use at their school and everything. It's just a really cool addition. Um, yeah, obviously this is just the base game. So yeah, you may not want to particularly pick up that one. Um, I just forgot that, to grab something else in the collection, which we'll show in a minute. Um, but yeah, Persona 5 is an awesome game. Uh, but yeah, you don't necessarily need to get that original version. Um, if you're interested in that original one, it was also released for PS3. Uh, but yeah, there's no need to get that one. Um, and as we're on the PS4, obviously I'll show one of the other ones. Um, yeah, Shimagama Tensei 3 Nocturne did also get a HD remaster. Or, well, it did get a HD remaster. Um, yeah, really cool artwork on the back there. I love that. Um, yeah, this isn't a perfect remaster. Um, yeah, it kind of, the frame rate is... It performs worse than it did on the PS2, and um, the cutscenes are terrible. Um, yeah, they didn't really upscale them or make them look good, and they have, like... Because, obviously, they're 4x3 originally. Um, they decided to kind of fill the borders with kind of, like, the scene itself, but blurred, if that makes any sense. So it looks really weird. Um, you know, they may as well just kept the black bars or something. Um, but, yeah, it's still a solid game, you know? It's still worth playing. Um, outside of those little issues, it's just a solid game. It's a more accessible way to play it. Obviously, if you're interested as well, you can get it on Switch and obviously Steam as well. And yeah, it's great. Um, I managed to get this brand new for like 24 quid, um, like a year or two ago, or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, so it shouldn't be too expensive. Um, it probably, I think it's probably cheaper than getting the PS2 version. I'm, I haven't checked, I'm just saying that. Um, but yeah, next up, this is a really interesting one. Um, yeah, for some reason, well, well, I say for some reason. That's like my catchphrase, isn't it? But yeah, they decided to actually do a Persona fighting game. And yeah, this one is really cool. So this is um, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Uh, this is the updated version. There was an original release of the game, which was on um, PS3 and uh, 360. And then they just did an updated version, which I think was exclusive to PlayStation. I can't remember. Um, and if you want the original version, that also did come on the soundtrack CD. This one didn't. Um, so basically, it says Persona 4 Automax, but it does also have Persona 3 characters. It's kind of a combination of them both. Uh, this is done by Arc System Works. So basically, Blaze Blue Guilty Gear, but with Persona characters. You know, you, if you played one of their games, you'll know exactly what to expect. So yeah, um, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, but yeah, just a great, solid fighting game. Um, what I really like is how they... Um, make the personas work in a fighting game. You have this little gauge and then you can kind of use them to fight alongside you. Um, it's really cool. Um, yeah, I kind of hope they do a JoJo's fighting game in the start at some point. Uh, that would just be amazing. Um, there was something else up here. I don't know if this game. Blaze Blue Cross uh, Tag Battle. So from what I remember, I believe this adds... Um, this is kind of like their take on a versus game. 
you can see Teddy's there already. So you got like the Blaze View characters and the Persona Ultimax characters all sort of fused into one. It's a really cool game. Um, yeah, obviously this is the PS4 version. I believe this game is on Game Pass. And if you want the most kind of like up-to-date kind of version of it, that I think the Xbox version is that one. Um, yeah, really cool fighting game. And I'll drop something again. And then um, obviously next up, um, yeah, I'm sure everyone knows this, but Persona 5 Royal, this is the uh, Xbox version. Um, yeah, just an updated version of Persona 5, the one you want to get. Obviously, um, I think it was, was it last year or the year before? Um, year before, sorry. Um, they did, um, they finally ported this game to other platforms so you can get it on PS4, 5, Switch, and the Xbox platforms. And obviously this is a smart delivery one, so it's Xbox One in series. So um, yeah, I think how that works is you have the Xbox One version on there, and then the series, um, then it just updates and makes it the series version. What's cool about this is you get to play this game at a full 4K 60 frames, which is amazing if you're playing on the Series X, obviously. Um, it was on Game Pass for about a year, so yeah, obviously, you know, um, deal with that information what you will. Um, and then obviously, you saw this already, my uh, Persona 3 Reload, oh, Reload, bloody Persona 3 Portable. Well, I mean, playing Reload that much, I'm a, I just can't think of anything else right now. But yeah, this obviously is the update version. It was original on the PSP, um, and then finally got ported over to all the platforms again, PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, Switch. Um, but yeah, this one added the, removed the answer, but added the female protagonist. So yeah, you can play as the girl instead if you like. Um, yeah, unfortunately she's not in the remake, but hopefully they'll add her eventually, who knows. They usually do updated versions, so I'm sure it'll happen again. But yeah, really cool version. Um, changed things up a bit, because it had to run on the PSP, so it made it more of a menu-based system and everything. Um, and yeah, if I haven't explained already, I have, um, I picked up Persona 3 Portable digitally on the PSP back in the day, because I was just sort of into game, digital games, um, instead of buying the physical one, which is kind of dumb. Same with um, uh, Persona Revelations, um, the PSP remake of the first game. Yeah, it wasn't Revelations Persona, the turned to Persona Revelations, they switched it around, so you know it's a remake, I guess. And obviously Persona 2 was the same thing as well. Um, and then the final game in the collection, uh, one of my absolute favorites is the incredible Shin Megami Tensei V. Um, yeah, this is just an absolute banger of a game, in my opinion. Um, this is one that I think yeah, you guys should definitely try out. Um, and one really cool thing is I got the steel book with it as well, which is awesome. It's still, still sealed. Um, and annoyingly, it kind of has a bit of a dent in it. Um, yeah, kind of around the back there, it's kind of annoying. But yeah, really cool. Um, you have some of the demons and everything. But yeah, this is um, obviously, as of now, is still only on the Switch. But I'm sure a lot of RPG fans own a Switch anyway. There's like 140 million of them out there. So yeah, um, great, great game. Um, and yeah, that's the collection. Um, yeah, it's a series that I really love. Um, and yeah, I just want to share my love for it for you guys or you know, all the games I have in my collection. And yeah, obviously, um, yeah, I, like I said, um, I am playing Persona 3 Reload at the moment and it's amazing. Um, I've got it on Xbox. I uh, decided to get a digital version again. Um, basically, I was able to get the digital deluxe edition for like a five or more than the game was physically and annoyingly Atlas did this whole thing with the game where you have to get the standard version or you have to get like that Argus edition which has the statue and all that and I just don't want all that stuff I just want the game with all the DLC and everything so I've picked up that version but um yeah more than likely it's going to be ported to like the new Switch console so that's when I'll get my physical version anyway but yeah anyway guys um hope you enjoyed this video or got anything out of it I don't know if you did and yeah hopefully I will catch you guys in the next one have a great rest of your day